Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku. Bringing you a grand solar minimum update Friday, December 4th, around 11 p.m. Mountain Time 2020. Now, the graph we have up here is the solar cycle since 1900. And my question is to you, is history repeating itself? Well, we'll see in a moment. The big story, nor'easter could cause whiteouts and power outages this weekend. Snowfall rates will increase through Saturday, and the wind could cause whiteouts and power outages. Keep calm. It's boom time. Warning issued for snow in parts of Massachusetts up to a foot could fall north of Worcester. Worcester. Snow expected to fall throughout Vermont this weekend. The biggest totals will be in New Hampshire and Maine. It's insane. We'll get to it. Towns in northeastern Connecticut also should prepare for snow. Ho, ho, ho. Santa is coming. But the big story, looking back, let's look back almost 100 years ago. Well, it's more than 100 years ago. It's 107 years ago. 86 inches of snow falls during the blizzard in Denver, in Colorado. A blizzard to remember. Look at the streets. Snowfall in De Denver started in, on December 1st and continued to the 5th tomorrow or now when you're watching. And it basically stopped. People slept at work for a week. They couldn't get home. More than 100 years ago, massive amounts of snow hit Colorado in early December of 1913. The storm continues to be one of the biggest blizzards to have ever hit the state. Bringing life to a standstill for a few days in part of the centennial state. Now, the reason we're bringing this to, to light is because 1913 is the lowest, right here, boom, solar minimum since today. And the only reason you'll get to see that is if I move myself. Now, solar cycle 14 is the smallest cycle since solar cycle 24, the one we just ended. And the minimum just ended. It's going to end in a double part just like this. And it is my prediction that we're going to get a repeat of that storm. Why wouldn't we? Based on paleoclimatology. So buckle your seatbelts, kids. Nor'easter for the Northeast. Fire weather conditions continue for Southern California. And snow. Yes. In Texas. The nexus of the Schmexus. Heads up, Chihuahua, Mexico. We'll get to you. A powerful nor'easter, first of the winter season, is expected to roll up the northeastern seaboard and impact the region with a number of hazards this weekend. Very heavy wet snow with gusty winds will affect a good portion of New England and rain will lash the coastal areas. Meanwhile, dangerous fire weather conditions continue for Southern California this weekend and likely into next week. What a tweak. I'm no geek. Well, I, I, I kind of am. I don't even know if you could see that. Yes, thank you. Tinfoilcap.co, where you can get one of these. Now, here we're looking at the GFS model. It's just updating. This is the newest model coming out for the U.S. Hello, and we've got the freshest data. Nobody's got it like this. So let's just walk you through. Here is, yes, I can't even see the snit. This is Saturday, December 5th. Snow moving into, whoa, boom. So Saturday evening, you should see snow hit Connecticut and southern uh, New Hampshire, and then it's going to explode across New Hampshire and southern Maine. It's insane. Look at this. 16-inch totals, quite easy for hundreds of square miles. Yeah, and this brings you into Sunday evening. So by Saturday night to Sunday night, take a look at your plight. Heavy snow in Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire going to get slammed and Maine straight through the strip of the center. Take a look at that. That's, that's a lot of snow. Ho, ho, ho. And luckily we're going to have some residual effects down here in the Southern Appalachians, snowshoe and uh, West Virginia picking up some snow. So those ski resorts are going to uh, benefit, but I want to draw your attention up here to British Columbia. And again, tilting the scale at, five, six, seven feet of snow in just the next few days until the western system starts to dump down here and we start to pick up some nice little totals in our area of drought. But let's talk about British Columbia. New study just came out. British Columbia glaciers are 28 to 49% thicker 
than computer models estimated. Hello? Extensive radar surveys on seven glaciers in the Columbia River Basin and Rocky Mountains found the ice 28 to 49% thicker than scientific papers have been claiming. And we are scientifically shaming those people that uh, got the grants to lie about those glaciers for global warming funding. And here's the paper, bias corrected. That means all you liars have been corrected. Bias corrected estimates of glacier thickness in the Columbia River Basin based on facts coming from satellites. It's glorious. Now several global data sets of glacier thickness have been reset as well as the ice thickness in the Arctic, which has been overestimated at 50 centimeters thinner for the last decade. So climate science needs a major reset. We don't need a global reset, but science certainly does. And here we see the European models showing nothing less than more snow in northern UK. Yes, and they're updating. We've got the freshest models at the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News. Heavy snow in the Alps, tilting the scales. Here it's showing 166 centimeters and rising. Two meters of snow, six feet coming in the next week. And as predicted, there will be avalanches, people stuck and death and misery and amazing skiing at the same time. Shut up, Al. Get in your hole. He says there's no snow up there. And I'm lying. <laughs> That's why he's in a hole. But we can see here heavy snow over five feet of snow in northern Spain. It's insane. We've got two to three feet of snow in Africa in the desert. Oh, times are changing. Cold front delivers the first snow season in Chihuahua, Mexico. Right next to the nexus of Texas, the Schmexus. Temperatures dropped as low as minus 10C in some mountainous areas, areas of the Chihuahua Mountains. And there you can see an excellent picture of the snow. Ho, ho, ho. Santa comes to Mexico. Snow falls around the UK in pictures. And it's glorious. Well, it's winter over in Europe. And they just blame it on that. But they've been saying it will never snow in the UK ever again. Well, it's coming and it's just beginning. Big snowfalls in the Alps and the Pyrenees predicted. Seismic update. No quakes of note except one on the New Madrid. Hello. Hello, misery. 2.7. Yep, it's coming. Small earthquake swarm in the Tiernus fracture zone east of Grimsey Island in the north of the Iceland. Heavy snow has pre prevented the north of the Iceland from showing the seismics. However, single earthquake on the Reykjanes Ridge in the seismics were shown a few days ago. That's my best Icelandic American. Go's magnetometer has gone flat for two days. That means we, yeah, there's no more magnetosphere. We're dead. Or perhaps it just went flat due to an arc jet start and arc jet end, whatever that means, but it happened. And X-ray flux is showing another sea flare just happening hours ago. Ho, ho, ho. KP0, are you stabbing the walls? Does it feel like you just smoked bath salts? I bet it does. Full moon boom effect. Ongoing. Worldwide volcano news update. Kluchiskov puffing to 23,000 feet and not passing. Bogart City. Talika Volcano. And that's about it. Now, let's talk about no-kill lab-grown meat. <laughs> Ew! Now, this isn't cheek meat where you actually eat yourself, which we reported on about a week ago. But this is actually the first bioreactor that is making bovine fetal cell chicken meat in a reactor. And they don't have to kill chickens. It's totally amazing. They just take bovine fetal serum. They mix it with some chicken cells from a live chicken biopsy that they take from its... And then they just mix it up in this reactor and they make chicken nuggets. Delicious. Oh, my God. And it was approved by science. Nearly 6 million people are under stay-at-home order in the San Francisco Bay Area. These draconian communist measures will simply spread the disease at home. 
Now, would you be willing to get a COVID vaccine in exchange for a $1,500 stimulus check? Well, that's the bribery method they're talking about in Congress right now. Yes, pay to play. Prick it to click it. You want the money. We want to stick you up with our funny stuff. Yeah. Like the world has changed so rapidly. It's time to burn it down. House passes legalization and decriminalization of marijuana at the federal level. Yeah, let's burn it down. Downtown, Leroy Brown. Puff, puff, pass. This is the smartest thing we've done ever in the country in recent times. That's, well, there you have it. Now, dogs poop in alignment with Earth's magnetic field. Now, if you have a dog and you're not doing research, well, shame on you. Poo, poo. I want to figure out what that's all about, don't you? Hello. Earth is on the cusp of the sixth mass extinction. Now, here's what paleontologists want you to know. Now, I'm a paleontologist, and I don't want you to know a fucking thing about this. Except that Discover is the number one producer of sharticles on the planet. So here's the mass extinction sucking all life off the surface somehow. Now, let's talk about what they say here. Rhinos, elephants, whales, and sharks. Oh, my. The list of endangered species is long and depressing. And those particular animals on the list have nothing to do with climate change. They have to do with uh, poaching. Hello! They don't talk about it in the article. Uh, but it's all your fault. Because you are a human and you burn fossil fuels and you put plant food in the environment, these animals are getting poached out of existence. And the next, next mass extinction, according to Discover and scientists, is a slow slip. It's not rapid. It's because of poaching, not because of magnetic reversals and the death of huge swaths of the population. It's because of you, CO2, and plant food. Where will I go from this? I don't know. China turns on nuclear-powered artificial sun. Now, it's been years in the making. We've reported on this. And many people think when the sun goes on, it's a sun simulator. It's up in the sky. It's going to be the 19th sun. There'll be four Nibirus, the sun and the Chinese sun, and we're all done. Um, folks, this is the mainstream media bloviating about a, a, a fusion, fission reactor. Uh, anyway, China successfully powered up its artificial sun, which is on the surface, not a laser beam, but it's on the surface. <coughs> the artificial sun nuclear fusion reactor for the first time, state media reported Friday, making a great advance in the country's nuclear power research capabilities. Now, the HL-2M Tokamak reactor is China's largest and most advanced nuclear fusion experimental research device. It's the same as the Sapphire Project. Hello! So, if you think that this is an actual sun or an artificial sun that's in space or anything else, you've been duped by the media. It's just a reactor that's on the surface. It's th these these 12-year-old scientists are standing next to it for fuck's sake. And they're alive. So you'll be fine. So don't get your panties in the bunch because the efficiency of this fusion reactor is, well, it's probably embarrassing. And Nikola Tesla is turning over in his grave in his embarrassment. Australia's Great Barrier Reef status has been lowered from endangered to just critical because they're liars. Thank you, Jennifer Marhasi, for having the balls to report on the facts that the Great Barrier Reef bleaching is a decadal phenomenon due to the sun and solar minimum and nothing else. Hello. More than 2.5 miles of cliff paintings found hidden in the Amazon rainforest show ancient hunter-gatherers killing Ice Age creatures. Now, these glyphs, which are pictographs, 
using red ochre um, were dated from 12,600 to 11,005 during the Younger Dryas mass extinction, which probably ended around 10,000 years ago as the sea level ended its uh, audacious rise of meters. Yes, in fact, 300 feet in some places. But what we should take note of is the red ochre paintings of horses that are 12, probably, these depictions are estimated to be depictions of what was happening on Earth 13,000 years ago or earlier. So clearly there were horses in the Americas 13,000 years ago and how they wouldn't have gone up to North America at that time for the natives up here is uh, anyone's guess because it's just a few hundred miles walk up the continent for fuck's sake. Now, coming over to the article at Business Insider, you can see the mesa where the pictures are painted around. It's eight kilometers worth in a circle. It's exactly... Um, a simile or a duplicate or a uh, reminiscent of every single petroglyph uh, monolithic mesa type environment here in the southwest where you have a mesa that rises up and around the upper perimeter of the mesa we have the same petroglyph stories now if these people didn't know each other they seem to have the same exact an idea spontaneously over thousands of miles on the same continent in the same place with the same pictures and it was just it happened to be a coincidence. And you know what else is a coincidence? The fact that they're depicting small humans here, multiples of them, massacring this giant mammoth in real time. And now these are some of the most spectacular depictions of what was actually happening on Earth 13,000 years ago. And this won't ever be in textbooks, kids. And the fact that they're even reporting on it in, on some mainstream sites is beyond reproach. It's awesome. It's, in, it's insane. But it's part of the disinformation campaign to start to trickle out more information, to blow your mind, and to make you totally confused on what's actually happening. Yes. They don't want you to know what's actually happening. They want to confuse you as much as possible. Now, watch this unreal drone footage of the Arecibo Observatory's catastrophic collapse. When I was a child, this Radio Observatory fascinated me. And as an adult, I volunteered for the SETI project about 15 years ago, 20 years ago. And we did some amazing work using this telescope. And unfortunately, just a few days ago, it was destroyed. And many scientists have banded together, yes, to refund and rebuild this amazing resource in Puerto Rico. Enjoy the video and hold your tears as I do. So sad. So what's amazing is they had a drone there flying, watching the cables, and we actually got to see it live exploding and, and crashing down on that main di dish there, completely decimating the structure and ending decades of amazing scientific research coming from this one of the most massive radio telescopes on the planet. And not only that, this telescope brought a certain sense of pride to Puerto Rico and the people there, especially those uh, scientists working on it. And our hearts and our prayers go out to those that lost this amazing resource. And we hope that they do 
rebuild, Arecibo, because it is part of our future and it is a part of our history. Hope you got something out of the video. Times are changing. Thanks to all of our one-time donors and our new Patreons. Thanks to each and every one of you that shares these videos. Without you, we could not do this. And we plan on expanding more information in the coming future to you as Leah and I start to take on more difficult topics together. Be safe. We love you. Click on one of the boxes to gain more knowledge. And be safe.